Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, we're gonna look at how we can add an air source heat pump to your existing hot tub. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so those of you that have read the blog or follow this YouTube channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all of those things. You'll know that I talk very much about building your own DIY hot tub. However, over the last few weeks, I've had more and more inquiries from existing hot tub owners that want to add an air source heat pump and they can't find the information on how to do so. So I thought I'd put together this video. Hopefully it will help you to be able to add an air source heat pump to your existing hot tub without too much trouble. So what do we need to consider? Well, firstly, we need to consider the size of the air source heat pump that you're gonna add to your tub. Now, if your hot tub is around a six seater, the rule of thumb is that you always want to have the largest air source heat pump that your budget can, can actually take. So I would recommend no less than a nine kilowatt air source heat pump. If you're gonna go to the trouble to actually purchase one and plumb it all in, then you might as well get a larger one that's actually gonna give you the, the benefit, the speed of the heat up, that kind of thing. In an ideal world, somewhere between 12, and you could go up as high as 20, 20 is probably an overkill, but somewhere between 12 to 17 kilowatts is probably ideal for a six person hot tub. Again, if there's people that don't agree with this, let me know in the comments below. Always happy to have feedback from the viewers. Okay, so we've got the size of the heat pump. Now we need to decide exactly where we're gonna place it. So it needs to be, within close proximity to the hot tub. It doesn't need to be right next to it, but it does need to be pretty close. I'd say within you know, around 10, 15 feet is, is ideal. Now your location of the air source heat pump, you've got to allow for airflow all the way around it. So you can't have it up against a wall. You can't have it encased in a, uh, a wooden frame, for example. You can't really hide the air source heat pump. It needs to be outside. It needs to have airflow all the way around and the fan, the direction of the fan, you need to have a couple of meters or six to eight feet of space to allow the, the air to totally move around and, and be discharged from the unit. That's kind of how they work. It's, uh, it's kind of fundamental. So once we've got the location sorted, the next thing is we need to think about how we're gonna actually plumb this in. Now, when you're plumbing in an air source heat pump, what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up the cabinet of your hot tub and you're gonna to look to find if you have a circulation pump. So if you've got more than one pump inside of your hot tub, you're gonna look for the one that is on the filter. So if it's really not obvious which pump is on the filter, what you're gonna do is you're gonna switch on your hot tub, you're gonna whack up the heat and you're just gonna wait and you're gonna see which pump kicks in, the pump that kicks in and does the heating is the pump that is the circulation pump. And this is the pump that you want to use for your air source heat pump. Now, if you have a hot tub that only has one pump, that means it's a dual speed, so it can do both. You can still use an air source heat pump with your hot tub. However, there might be some flow rate challenges and we'll come and look at those later and I'll specifically reference those um, and what we need to do to try and combat them. So once we've identified the pump, the next thing we need to do is work out where we're gonna put this in the plumbing order. So the plumbing order is as follows. The water will come in through the front of your pump. It will then come out either the side or the top, depending on which way it's orientated. It will then go through a filter. It will then go through your spa pack. And at this point, there should be a gate valve as well. And ideally, you're gonna be wanting to cut into your water lines after your spa pack and ideally after your gate valve. And that's so that you can still isolate your pump if you need to. So you're looking for the space and there's a, a diagram behind me which shows how this all connects. You're gonna to need to cut into your water line. So that means you're gonna have needed to empty the tub 
of water, otherwise it's going to go everywhere. And you're also going to need to make sure that the power's turned off. If we're going to do any work on it, we need to make sure that the, the, that the power's off on the tub so nothing kicks in whilst we're working on the tub. So we're going to chop out a small section of the water pipe. Water pipe's usually two inch. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of 90 degree bends, and that's going to allow us to take the pipes out of the case. Now, the case or the, the, the cabinet, whatever you want to call it, it's the, the element that kind of surrounds your, your hot tub. You are going to need to drill a couple of holes in to get your two inch pipes through there. And you can see on the diagram behind me exactly what I mean. I've, I've rendered up here what a, a hot tub with the pipes coming out for an air source heat pump actually looks like. We're now going to take those pipes and we're going to have them connect up to the air source heat pump. Now, the flow on an air source heat pump in general, it doesn't matter which way it goes. If it does matter, there will be an indication of in and out on your air source heat pump. So make sure that you have the inward flow going the right way through if it is indeed uh, directional. The thing to remember when you're plumbing in your air source heat pump is you're gonna have to have a manual bypass valve uh, connected to it. It sounds more complicated than it actually is. So a manual bypass, as you can see behind me, is a series of three gate valves. What it enables me to do is it enables me to shut the water off into the air source heat pump so I can disconnect it if I need to, but it also allows me to adjust the flow rate if there is too much flow. And this is the point that I made earlier that I said I would come back to and highlight. If you're on a single pump on your hot tub, so it's a dual speed, there is a possibility that if you add an air source heat pump, you're gonna have not enough flow for your jets. The reason being is that the flow is restricted inside of the air source heat pump. If you're decreasing the flow, you're decreasing the amount of water that's gonna get into your jets. It may or it may not be noticeable. If it is noticeable, what you will need to do is you will need to manually open that bypass valve to let more water through when you want to use the high speed. Now, if you don't close it afterwards, the heating will not be as efficient because some water is bypassing the air source heat pump. So remember to either close it or if you're happy for it just to be left and so that you don't need to do it each time, that's also okay. Just your heating efficiency will, will not be as good if you're actually uh, bypassing the, the, the air source heat pump. Now, one of the questions that I get asked a lot is, should I be disconnecting my electric heater? Personally, I would say no. I would say leave your electric heater running, let your air source heat pump work in conjunction. It will do most of the work. It's bigger, it can output more energy, it will output more heat. So what that will mean is the overall running time for heat up will be a lot less. So your electricity bill will also be a lot less. Remember with an air source heat pump, for every kilowatt you're putting in, you're looking to get three times that out. So it's about three times as efficient as using an electric heater on its own. That's kind of how they work. And it's the reason that you want to do them so that you can actually lower your costs of running your hot tub. If you do want to, or if you insist on disconnecting your, um, your heater, you can certainly try it. It may throw an error on your spa pack. The way that you're gonna do it, you're gonna open up your spa pack. At the bottom of the spa pack where you've got that silver tube, that's your heater. Above that, there will be a connector that plugs into the circuit board to power up the heater. If you disconnect that, you can then try to see if your tub will run without the heater running. Some of the spa packs will do, some won't. So it, it really depends on, on what you have inside of your hot tub, but that is a way of making sure that if you are disconnecting it, then you know, do it at the, the, the circuit board so that then you can just use the air source heat pump. However, if you do that, the chances are your thermostat won't give you a, an, an accurate reading. So really, I just recommend leaving it as is and using the air source heat pump as an additional heater for your hot tub. In that way, you're gonna get an accurate reading from your thermostat when you're reading the temperature on your top side you're gonna independently set on your air source heat pump the temperature as well. So it's just better. Again, this is in my opinion. If you don't agree, let me know in the comments. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Gotta get that in as well.
What else do we need to consider? Well, the last thing is we may need to change a setting on our spar pack. So if we're using a Balboa unit, for example, Balboa units have a cool down period and that's set with a dip switch. The reason that we can use that cool down period is it stops the water, what's known as kettling, inside of the air source heat pump. So for example, if your air source heat pump is still running whilst your circulation pump is not, then the water is just sat. And if the air source heat pump doesn't detect that it's just sat, that water can get very, very hot and it can boil. And that's what the kettling effect is. So if you do have a Balboa unit, there is a dip switch in the top right hand corner that you can turn on. It will say on the control panel on the underside which one it is and you can then allow the unit to actually run without the heaters running for five minutes to allow everything to cool down. And that was put in there by Balboa and other packs do this as well. And it's really so that for the likes of propane heaters and gas heaters in the past, it allowed the, the war them to cool down before we actually turned off the circulation. So well worth checking for that as well. And finally, if I can help you in any way with the supply of air source heat pumps, with the supply of all the bits and bobs you need to actually connect them, or with just some general advice about connecting an air source heat pump to your existing hot tub, then please hit me up in the comments, drop me an email. It's andy at, and that's andy with an I, at buildahottub.com. Always lovely to hear from you. Once again, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you on the next video. If you've liked this video, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. See you on the next video.